Hey Zion Church family, what a great joy that we could do this once again, coming live to your homes, no matter where you are, if you are in Dallas, Texas, thank you for allowing us to be part of your Sunday morning service as you are joining in with your family. If you are around the world joining us, thank you so much. I believe God has a word for all of us. Did y'all enjoy the worship that was just going right before me? It was an amazing time to to be in the presence of God Almighty. And I know there is nothing else that we could desire in our life more than being in the presence of the one who has created us. Every lack that we have can be made and put in perfect order if we are and we know how to enjoy the presence of our God Almighty. Today, I'm so excited. Excited because today is week five of a sermon series we've been calling Triggered. It's a joy to come into your home for the last couple of weeks with this sermon series. And I believe God is blessing people. Just last week after we preached, uh, you know, um, you know, I received so many messages from a lot of people who believe that this was a life changing experience in their life. And week one, you know what? Actually, we talked about how we shouldn't make decisions based on our feelings. Feelings fluctuate. Feelings are momentarily. It keeps changing and shouldn't make decisions based on our feelings. So that was week one of Triggered. If you all have not yet watched, you may have to go back to our podcast or YouTube channel and you can listen to it. And I'm sure God is going to talk to you. Week two, we spoke about how we shouldn't be holding things in our life. We should let it go. It's the past relationships, the past whatever past you know whatever you hold on to you think you're holding on to that but actually it is those things that is holding you it is taking your time and you can't make if only you can make room for the new god will bless you with new things so we need to learn how to let it go you can put it on the chat right now let it go week three we looked into the aspect of how we shouldn't um con- you know Keep holding on and continue to be in anger. Getting angry is not sin. It's not a sinful thing. But if you are holding on to that anger for a long time, it can lead you to much more devastating places in life. And that's why week three, we learned about how anger can actually trigger those emotions that can actually build a wall of separation between you and God. And you wouldn't be receiving the blessings God has ordained and orchestrated for us. So leave your anger. And we studied from the story of Naaman, how God healed Naaman through Elijah. Week four was powerful. It ministered to me and especially into our church's life last week was simply crazy. Uh, I know the political situation has kind of divided the whole America and the world, but at the same time, a lot of our families who were members who were tested positive with COVID and uh, with the situations that were going on, it was something that we learned last Sunday that I will not allow the negative news to take control over my life but I'm going to stay positive I'm going to have hope for a new beginning and God is the one who is going to lead me through but here I am today week five of a sermon series we are calling triggered and I believe this series or today's message is towards some of you guys some of you not everybody I don't think so it's everybody but it's pertaining to some people out there who are constantly caught up in the comparison trap you heard it right i want to call today's sermon week five of our sermon series the comparison trap you know we don't like to be in a place where it is shut down completely i know i was talking to a lot of our young folks recently who does not like to stay quarantined some of them they are like i am just ready to get out of my house i'm just ready to get off my room but hey you have to stay quarantined for the time that the the the, the, the government is asking you or the people is asking you and and for the safety of everybody you will have to stay quarantined but you, you may not like it but look listen listen the entire portion here you have to see that there's a comparison trap 
in our life. Listen, sometimes we look into the life of somebody else. Their relationship is perfect. They have a perfect family. They have a perfect career. They have a perfect vehicle. They have a perfect girlfriend. You know, we look into a lot of things in our life and, and we look into somebody else's life and we, we try to compare it with ourselves. Listen, this is what happens when we see others who have what we want, our lives seem lacking. Listen to that once again. When we see others who have what we want, right? You're constantly looking around in your neighborhood, in your social media, on your Instagram feed and every places and you constantly look at people who have what you wanted to have and what happens is our life seems lacking in those moments. You will never be content on the inside if you are always looking at what other people have on the outside. Oh, I, I hope this makes sense to all of you guys who are listening to me. I don't think it is everybody. Maybe it is everybody everybody you know we all are journeying to the same boat and we are on the same journey here because constantly day up day night every day sun up sun down we are constantly comparing ourselves with a lot of other things that is going on comparing what we have and what we don't have with the things that others have in their life and this is what happens when you start looking into the life of what others have what they show on the outside you're always laughing can contend in what God has already provided in your life, into your life, and what God has already laid for you to be glorious and successful. But you will never be content on the inside if you're always looking at what other people have on the outside. Today, let's talk about how we can avoid the comparison trap. How we can avoid intentionally, we as body of believers, intentionally, we as the children of God Almighty, we need to avoid the comparison trap because it is a trap. Whatever is a trap and whatever is in the trap, it will die. And that's just, that is exactly what is happening in through our life. What you are not allowing to grow beyond that trapped environment will never grow in our life. And some of us, we are in that trap. Some of us, we find ourselves in that trap because we are never happy with what we have. We're not happy with our job. We're not happy with our spouse. We're not happy with our children. We are not happy with our ministry. You know, early on during our COVID situation, some of the pastors, they were looking constantly into what was happening as I on church and and, and and they called me and they're like oh you guys have so much so many people to do the things you guys have all the resources no I mean it's not that you constantly look into what others have and start looking into what you don't have start using what you already have and I'm thankful that a lot of our team went out to help some of the pastors who were in need. I'm like, Pastor, you have a camera. Pastor, you have an iPhone. Pastor, you have a Zoom account. You can do exactly what you're called to do for your church body. We're constantly looking into others. We're constantly looking into how many people are coming to that church. How much is this ministry going? At what rate? This minute, we're constantly comparing ourselves. What happens is comparison will always put you in a state of competition and Bible helps us to understand competition will never, will never please the presence of God. So listen, what are we doing? Have we put, our, I mean, have we put ourselves in a place of constant competition? But listen, God has called the churches, the body of Christ to come together, not to compete with each other, but to collaborate with each other. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I put this as a statement on my Facebook and I said, it, if only churches could come together to collaborate their services, to collaborate their ministries, how much beautiful our world, our cities, our environment around us would look. When if only we could understand the brothers, sisters, we all are the children of the living God coming together in agreement to do what exactly God has called us to do in this time and age. Hallelujah. We call to collaborate, not to compare ourselves and put us in the shoes of competition because that will never take us anywhere. We see through, through the scriptures in the Bible and we see through the stories of the Bible, Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, Leah and Rachel, Saul and David, the older brother and the prodigal son. In through many more stories of the Bible, you see how they compared themselves, their blessings with the other and they put 
them himself in a shoes of competition that destroyed their life. I am here to help somebody understand. Brother, sister, stop comparing with the others. God has already provided what you need. You have it all. Listen, I want to take your attention to Galatians chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. Galatians chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. This is how it goes. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not. Ooh, I love this scripture. It is so gold. It's like, if anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Ooh. Let me just pause that. Let me just pause this so that you can understand that are we deceiving ourselves? We think we are deceiving others when we are comparing ourselves. We are putting ourselves on an elevated platform that does not belong to us. You think you're deceiving others, but brother, sister, you got it wrong. Bible calls you out today to let you know that we are actually deceiving ourselves. Galatians chapter 6 verse 3 says, If anyone thinks that they are something when they are not, they are deceiving themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone. Without comparing themselves to someone else. Read through that portion when you get time. If not, somebody please put it on the chat right now. So that everybody can follow through us as we read it together. If anyone thinks that they are something which they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Oh, let's test our own actions and see are we deceiving ourselves. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing with somebody else. Stop comparing with other people, bro, brother, sister. What happens is comparison kills contentment. That's, that's the point one that I wanted to give it to you, all of you guys. That comparison kills contentment. Are you not content with what you have? The reason why you're not content is because you're looking around to see that what you don't have with somebody else is flashing their good stuff. You don't need what they have. You don't need what they have. You got already what God wanted you to have. And that's the attitude. When you are content, when you show signs of contentment in our life, you know, you are actually glorifying God. You're saying, God, you know what? Thank you. I didn't deserve it, but you gave it to me. That job, I didn't deserve it. That position, I didn't deserve it. That, that, that increment, that, that salary, I didn't deserve it. But God, you have provided and I'm happy about it. Because the more you start comparing yourself with other people, what happens is, brother, sister, you are putting God down. You're like, God, you're never enough in my life. That person can't have it, but I can't. She has the best job, but I don't. I suck in this job. They have the best family, Father, I don't. And sometimes this area of comparison has crept into married relationships. The way of constantly looking at Instagram feed of somebody else and we're like, you know what? Oh, their picture looks so cool. It is hot and sexy. It is so good. Ooh, did I just use that word on a Sunday morning service? Yes, I did. Because this is what is going on in our mind every time we see somebody else's family picture. And we're like, you know, what is going on? Why am I not brother, sister? You are the most beautiful person that God wanted you to have. Look into their eyes and let them know that you value them. You love them. You care for them. And you stand up for that person. Hallelujah. Stop comparing yourself. Because when you start doing it, you're actually defiling the presence of God. God in the Bible he has created everybody in the same way that he is created in the image of God. When you start comparing yourself, you are coming in the level of Satan, the great deceiver. You're saying that God can do anything in your life. He is deceiving you at that time. And that's why you see Galatians chapter 6 verse 3. That when you start doing things, when you start doing things, when you start doing things without testing your own actions, when you start doing things which you are actually not, when you pretend to be something else, you are actually deceiving yourself. What does that happen? It simply happens because in the, in the book of Genesis, you see when, when the devil crept in, 
When the devil just crept in like a snake, like a, like a serpent and walk and, you know, uh, crawl to Eve. He said, you know what? Only if you could do this, you could be like God. Started deceiving and that nature is found in every single person over generations. Every single pages of the Bible that you go through. You see how the devil has been deceiving people. And we are caught up in that state right now that we are deceiving ourselves. Because we have started comparing ourselves with somebody else. No, don't do it. When you start comparing, what happens is it kills contentment. You will never be happy if you're not content with what you have. You will never have joy. You will never have peace. You will never have happiness. You will never have good relationships around you if you are not content. Be content with what you have. Be happy with what you have. Hallelujah. A couple of days ago, couple of, actually a couple of months ago, I saw a, a post that was shared to me by a white friend of mine. And he said, you know what? Indians are, Indian, Indian families are having a lot of money now. And this is the story that goes behind it. You know, a father, a rich father, a business tycoon in India, he wanted to gift his son a, a, a very, uh, you know what, high profile car a very expensive car i think i think it was uh, uh something along the lines of a jaguar that he he gifted his son a very expensive car suv that he gifted his son and the son because he did not like the suv you know what, what he did he drove the suv of that brand new car into the lake and he drowned it media and people were around this kid and they're like what's going on he's probably 22 23 getting his gift from his dad the most expensive car and now because he didn't like it he compared it with other friends of him and he went and put it in the water that's what happens it is actually an expensive stuff but you wanted to compare yourself with somebody else and what they have and when you think that you don't have what they have you have killed your own joy You've killed your own happiness. You've ruined your own relationships. And that's what constantly happened with all of us. Comparison kills contentment. Where are we today? Are we killing our content, content lives? Are we killing our joy? Look to our own self. Are we deceiving ourselves? The next time you're on Instagram, the next time you're on social media and you see somebody else having the good things, listen, God has given you everything that you need to be happy about. Hallelujah. Brother, sister, he's already provided you with the best of the best. What is the best? It may not look like a big bungalow. It may not look like a big palatial house or a car. But his son who was crucified on the cross. His son who took our sins. His son who has taken our shame, our, pain, our shame, our pain, our guilt. Who was hung on the cross. So that you and me can have eternal life. And live a life of abundant glory in Jesus Christ. Stop comparing yourself with others. Stop comparing your life with others. Live a life of contentment. It's something that we need to practice in our life. Today I'm helping some of you all understand this. Let us practice. Let us practice and have a cultivate a habit of enjoying the blessings of God. Comparison kills contentment. Number two that I want to bring your attention towards is comparison leaves us prideful. Comparison leaves us prideful. You can put on the chat right now. Comparison leaves us prideful prideful let me read it for you Luke chapter 18 verse 11 to 12 this verse is going to be a game changer for you all Luke chapter 18 verse 11 to 12 it says the Pharisees the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed God I thank you that I am not like the other people. Oh, there are a lot of people who are, who are same, same category in the, in an Indian Malayali church. Oh, there is nobody like me, oh Lord. I am so good. And it's like, you know, they are so humble that this is the prayer that they will make. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed God I thank you that I am not like the other people he's thanking God that he's not like the other people whoa what a guy he's not the other people who are these guys who are these people he's not the other people like the the robbers the evildoers the adulterers or even like this tax collector hmm, I'm not like 
this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all I get. And this is what happens with a lot of people. We compare ourselves with the other person and which leaves us very prideful. And the last time I checked the word of God, pride is a sin. Pride separates you from God. The very one reason why one of the greatest angels to sing in the choir of heaven fell down from the glory of God was because of his pride. Let that sink in for a while. Pride can kick you out from God's Eden. Pride can kick you out from the presence of God. When you come to worship my brother, sister, look to the Lord and say, God, I am thankful for the life you have given me. I was a sinner, but now I am found in Jesus Christ. I was doomed for eternal death. But Father, through the work of the cross, today I find myself on the Savior's race. And Father, thank you for what you have done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother, sister, listening to me, pride leaves us, comparison leaves us prideful. Don't have that attitude. Everybody here, everybody listening to me, everybody as a child of God, we have shortcomings in our life. I love to say this. I've read it uh, many years ago while I was doing my theological studies. Every sinner has a Every sinner has a, has a future. Every saint has a past. Every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. Never forget that. Don't compare yourself with other people and say that, you know what, I fast every week. I pray 24 hours. I am always singing Anya Basha, Reke Basha, It's all good. But the moment you start comparing yourself, your good things with the other person, what are you doing? Brother, sister, is that you are eliminating everything God has already done in your life. Pride kicks you out. It doesn't make sense. No matter how much of you pray, no matter how much of you fast, no matter how much of you sing in Anyabasha and tongues, it doesn't make sense because pride has taken your heart. Today, today, listen, each of us, we need to make a decision in our life. Do not let pride creep in and kick us out from the presence of God. Hallelujah. Some people say little bit of pride is very good. No, I don't think so. Even that little bit can kick you off from the presence of God. We don't need it. And that's what happens. Comparison leaves us prideful. Comparison leaves us prideful. Stop comparing yourself. Stop saying that, you know what, they are not worth. You don't know their story. You don't know what they will become. You have no clue. You have no idea what somebody can become in their life. You see them today, but tomorrow you know you have no clue. Saul can become the Paul who has written more than 75% of the New Testament. The same Saul who murdered people. He has conquered a lot of people and passionately planted churches across. Why? Because my God can change anybody. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? I hope my word comes to you this morning as a warning. Don't let these things to trigger our faith and trigger us and pull us down from where and how we, we all start the Christian journey so good. But eventually our, our journey gets corrupted by the course of time. Our journey gets corrupted with what is going around because we start feeding on to other things. This is what happens. Comparison leaves us prideful. C.S. Lewis, this is why C.S. Lewis would say, he's, this is his, his entire statement. We say the people are proud of being rich. Listen, we say that people are proud of being rich or clever or good looking, but they are not. They are proud of being richer or cleverer or better looking than the others. If everyone else became equally rich or clever or good looking, there would be nothing to be proud about. C.S. Lewis was one of the greatest writers that has come into our time and age. And this is what he writes. He says that if at all, 
people start looking into their surrounding and find themselves with others who are equally in the same boat they will lose their contentment why because there's somebody else who looks exactly like them there's somebody else who has the exact same cash value like what they have the same kind of house the same kind of you know so they they they're nothing to be proud about they're nothing to be proud about and this is what you have to do in life sometimes you might be a person who has a lot of riches something that you have invaluable but you might come across people who have nothing change your lens when you look into that person because the more you start looking into their life with the lens that the world has offered the status that the world has offered you will always try to elevate yourself from the other person and that's why it's very important in our life because we are in a day and age where we are like oh that person does not have the skin color of mine and we put them down she doesn't have the equal bank balance that i have they are poor they are not classy they don't wear good clothes you have no clue what god and how god can change the tables around in just matter of seconds and days to come my god can do it but listen comparison would always leave us prideful and that's what we have to practice in our life we have to make sure that we don't allow pride to creep in and kick us out from the presence of the almighty god thirdly that i want to mention today is comparison leaves us jealous ooh for every malayali listening to me right now comparison leaves us jealous the last time i take the word again jealousy is sinful jealousy can lead you to be a murderer in through god's word when you see the story of cain and abel jacob and esau rachel and leah the the, the you know the older brother and the the prodigal say you come across all of these stories what do you see in common you see how because of jealousy because of comparison they have almost all they have killed their other sibling comparison leaves us jealous let's read proverbs chapter 14 verse 30 from the uh, nlt translation this is how it goes a peaceful heart leads us to a healthy body a peaceful heart is your heart peace in god peace with god jealousy is like cancer in the bones oh my god jealousy is like cancer in the bones cancer has the potential to grow it might start like a small nodule it may start something small but it grows if not taken care it will grow into your i remember my my i was talking to my parents um the last week and uh, we were kind of reminded again how my 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 grandfather uh from the maternal side my upper chin he died he passed away because of cancer it was many years ago probably 23 24 years ago and 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 it all started so small it all started so small in his i think he had the the lung cancer and it started very small and they didn't pay attention to it at that time and it just by the time they knew it was cancer it just quickly spread into different parts of the body only if they knew and they could have taken care of it i think he would have been safe for four, few more years but it just his health just deteriorated and he died so soon it just took over we know a lot of stories it starts small something small but it just takes over your life and it will kill you eventually what happens comparison leaves us jealous you see somebody else having the blessings you see somebody else inheriting good things you see somebody else with the uh, you know the way they speak or the way they carry you, you you see them and you're like jealous when you are on social media you see somebody else's blessing and you're like jealous what happens is the moment you have jealousy this is what i have understood the moment you have jealousy it might start something small but it gives the room for the devil to creep in and it will make you destroy somebody else you know with jealousy so many people have destroyed other person's ministry it happens even today why because of jealousy 
I know a lot of stories where ministers, God's anointed servants went on to fight against each other. Drag them to the court. Why? Because of jealousy. Even today that happens in our world. Jealousy. That pastor, I know I know a pastor of mine, you know, he has around 30,000 plus people in his church and everybody else who does not have 30,000 is jealous of that man. But you have no idea how much that man has paid the price for. The hours he has spent in closed doors. The hours that he spent one-on-one with God Almighty. You don't want to pay the price, but you will be there to have the idea of jealousy. To kill, to destroy somebody else. But this is what I have understood. How much ever, there are people I know, you know, I was, I was talking to a lot of people, you know, there are people who are jealous about what we get to do at our church. And there's a person who, who, who approached me and he said this, these words and he said, you know what, let, let us see, let me see how far you will go here. This was when I started at Zion Church three to four years ago. Let me see how far you will go. I am already here at four years mark at the same church where I started and I'm thankful for God bringing us thus far. I am thankful for the people in this building. I'm thankful for everybody who is with us on this service. No matter how much ever people will look into your life and your ministry and the success that God has given in your life with the eyes of jealousy. But it is the God Almighty that we serve. He takes care of us. People can curse what God has already blessed. And that's why I want to bring your attention to us. Comparison leaves us jealous. Stop comparing with other people. Start comparing your whatever God has provided in your life with others because that leaves us jealous and jealousy will make us murderers. A peaceful heart. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30 says, A peaceful heart leads us to a healthy body. Ooh. Do you have a healthy body? Is your life very healthy? If not, check your heart. Because it's well connected with your heart. How have you taken care of your heart? The things that you see, of course you see with your physical eyes, but it has the ability to, to register in your mind and all of it, all of it is processed in your heart. The feelings of jealousy comes from your heart. The feelings of being prideful comes from your heart. Heart is the seat um, throne of all emotions. All emotions. This is where it originates. Have you taken care of your heart? Bible helps us to understand in Proverbs that the heart is to protect your heart because it is the wellspring of life. All of your emotions originate from here. All of your decisions originate from here. Protect and guard your heart. Because it is the wellspring of life. And that's why comparison leaves us jealous. Run away. Stay away. Stop comparing. A peaceful heart leads us to a healthy body. But jealousy is like cancer to the bones. Do you have, I mean, you may say, Pastor, I don't have any cancer. But do you have jealousy? Hey, probably check. The roots of that is you have cancer in your bones and it will kill you. It will destroy you. It will never leave you happy. I know today I'm dealing with some um, married couples and life when they are constantly looking into the blessing and the life of others who are uh, successful in their married life. They're constantly looking into them. They're not having a happy marriage. They're not having a happy marriage because... Um, you know, many years ago when I was, I was in Springfield, Missouri, I was talking to a young family there. The first thing I asked them to do is, you know, get yourself out of all social media to enhance your marriage life. Because your social media life is so, your, 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 your time involved in your social media is so much that one, it's not giving your time within your family. And number two, because you're constantly seeing others and their life and you're not seeing that same results within you, it is not allowing both of you all to come together in agreement in a lot of things, in a lot of ways and practices within your house. So today, I don't know where you are in your life's journey. My friend, my brother, sister, family member, comparison leaves us jealous. It kills us. 
it makes us being prideful. It will destroy our life. Listen, we resent God's goodness in others' lives and ignore God's blessings in our life. We look into others' blessing and we resent God's goodness and blessing in others' life and we ignore his blessings in our life. Why don't we just take a moment in our life and look, God, I want to just thank you for the doors you've opened in my life. I just want to thank you for the ways you have led me, O oh Lord. The Father, I, want, I don't want to compare myself with anybody. But today, I just want to look into that mirror and not deceive myself. I just want to look into the mirror to let's let everybody know that God, I am thankful. I am thankful. Can you put on the chat right now and say, God, I am thankful for the life you have given me. I am thankful. Put on the chat right now. Everybody across all platform, no matter where you are, put on the chat right now. Lord, I am thankful. I am thankful for the kids that I have, for the job I have, for the cars that I drive, for the houses I have, or for the fine looking wife I have. I am thankful, Lord. I am good. You have already established me. I am thankful. And I don't want to find myself comparing with others. These are triggering moments in our life that can destroy our eternity. I want to take your attention to words. Now I want to give you how do we live without comparing? How do we live without comparing? Number one, recognize what you have. First of all, recognize what you have. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 and 13. I know today I'm giving a lot of scriptures and y'all need to, to, to write it down and memorize or read it again and again and use them when your life actually knocks at these hard surfaces. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. I am not saying this because I am in need for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances are. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every given situation. Whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me the strength. Listen and understand. I love how it ends over there. Paul is writing to the Philippian church. You have to understand the background of the Philippian church is they are a poor church. They are not like the city church. They are like in the, in the village kind of a setting. The Philippians, the church in the Philippi, Philippi, you know, they, 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 they are poor. They are broke. They have been persecuted. They don't have everything. But every time they have, uh, they, during their harvest season, something goes wrong. The, 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 they, they cannot make good money at all. They're poor church. And Paul is writing to this church and helping them understand something that is very valuable for a church in Dallas and around the world in 21st century in the year 2020 to understand. Listen, you and me could be in an area where the year 2020, you might have a uh, a loss of job, uh, you know, somebody loved one that, that left you or something that has not gone the way you wanted it to go. Let Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 through 4 13 uh, be a reminder to all of us. I am not saying brothers and sisters because I am in need. No, don't think I am in need for I have learned to be content whatever circumstances, whatever situations I have learned to be content in those be it I know what it is to be in need I know what it is to have plenty I have learned the secret of being content in every situation whether well fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in one I can do all this through the one who gives me strength. no matter how much ever you have your kitchen might be full flooded with all the food or your kitchen might have nothing left over but can I tell you, contentment comes with recognizing the favor of God in your life. Listen, recognize what you have. Today, I want you to look into your own self and I have what I need. God has already blessed me with. I am, I am, in, I, I, I am in the best place. I am in the best place where God has intended my life to be. 
Hallelujah. If you can, look through your phone right now. Go through your, your bank account right now. I'm just pulling up my bank details. I just want to look through that. I just want to say, you know what? My bank looks good. What God has given in my life is enough for me. I am in need, but I know my God shall supply all my need. But I will stop comparing what I have with the others. I will stop comparing. My money is good. What God has provided. This is not my merit, but what God has provided in my life. Can I tell you, the moment you start, you know, stopping, uh, uh, comparing yourself and recognizing what you have, you know, it gives you so much peace and actually financial peace in your life. Stop comparing and start recognizing what you have in your life. Number two, accept who you are. And I love this. I just want to just want to ponder there for a moment. Number two, accept you who, who you are. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. In them, oh, listen to each of those phrases, words being put together uh, 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 by Paul here. It says that for we are number one, his workmanship. God is the creator, the orchestrator of our life. Created in Christ Jesus for good. Brother, sister, you are created for good works. You are created by God for good works around you. Your people, your world, your community needs the good work that you can offer. The world is in need. And here we are comparing ourselves with others. Here we are thinking what I can do next to achieve more. Here, here we are. We are constantly thinking how can I have more and more. We are never satisfied. Hallelujah. We are never satisfied. And that's why God says, the word says, we created in Christ Jesus for good works in Christ, for our community around, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So in other words, the, 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 the creator God has orchestrated things that we walk in them, but we're not walking in them. We're walking away because we don't like walking in the, in the ways that God has already made for us, created for us. But we just want to compare ourselves and kill our joy. Brother, sister, you're killing your joy and you're killing your family's joy. You're killing your joy and you're killing all the relationships that you're part of. You're killing their joy. You're comparing yourself. A lot of people come to church. A lot of church leaders are, are never happy because they constantly compare themselves with others. Brother, sister, I cannot tell you something. Stop that. Be happy with what you have. Be happy with the people God has given you. Be happy with the finances God has given you. Be happy with the talented folks around you. Make the Lord bless you more with that. But be content with what you have. Stop comparing yourself. Thirdly, I want to bring your attention to words. Find contentment by killing comparisons. Now, if you remember the point one that I shared here was comparison kills contentment but it's about time for you to reverse that curse in Jesus name it's about time for you to reverse what has come into your life to destroy you but today I want you to understand one thing very importantly here find contentment by killing comparisons stop comparing kill comparisons and find contentment when you are content with God God is, your life is gonna skyrocket with the blessings of God Almighty because you realize that everything in your life is His grace. Lastly, that I want to declare is that declare today. Declare today. And I want you to put this on the chat. Declare today, I am enough. Oh, I love it. Put on the chat right now and say, I am enough. I, Brother, sister, you are enough. What God has given in your life is enough. And I want you to understand this. You can be what you didn't have. You can be what you didn't see. You can live what you didn't learn. And you can portray what you never saw modeled to you. Because the one is greater that lives inside you. You are enough. Hallelujah. 
I pray that this word will come as a word of encouragement into your life. I just want to read that declaration over your life as I'm going to wind up and pray with you. But listen, you are enough. Don't compare yourself. I love the story where David goes to meet with uh, uh, his brothers. He's taking a, a grilled cheese sandwich to go greet his brothers who are in the front line fighting the giant. For almost 39 days, they've been hearing the giant calling them out. But nobody has the guts to face the giant. King Saul is standing at the background. He's like, is there anybody who could go and kill this soldier? Is there anybody who can go and slay this giant? There is nobody among his people. King Saul, who is tall and handsome, doesn't have the, 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 the guts to face the giant. David walks in. David walks in and when he hears, you know what, somebody calling out his God, the God of Israel. David is like, ooh, you don't mess with my God. You don't mess with what I have. <laughs> you have no idea. You might be a giant. You might be 40 years old. You might be 60 years old with your experience. But you have no idea what you're messing with. I was trained in the jungles. I was trained in the backwaters. I was trained when nobody else was seeing. And I took down the bear and the lion when they approached. Oh, he is a gangster mode right now. He's like, you know what? You don't mess with what I have. David says, I have what I need because I am enough. I am enough. David approaches King Saul and Saul says, Saul looks at the boy and is like, are you sure? And David is like, yes, of course, I am enough. Saul says, you know what? I don't think you are enough. You are only, if you read through uh, uh, Samuel, you will understand. Sam, Saul says, you're only a boy. Listen, listen, you need to stop what people would say to you stop hearing that the reason is why why does Saul say he's only a boy because Saul thinks low of himself sometimes people will portray what they think of themselves into your life you're not good enough because I am not good enough you cannot do it because nobody in our family has done this you can't but that's the same thing you see when Samuel went to call Saul, or when Samuel was uh, anointing Saul, you know what Saul said? I am the least of the tribe. My tribe is the least, the poorest, the weakest. I can't do it. And that's the same thing he's saying over David. But here is David. He says, no, 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 Saul, you got it wrong. I didn't ask for your family background. I am just looking into what God has already put in my heart and my soul because I know I am enough. I don't compare myself with my older achachans. They're all heavy. They all eat good meat. I starve at the jungle. I have nothing. I just eat the berries. I have nothing. <laughs> and Saul would say, you know what? I know that you want to go, but why don't you wear my armor? You just, you, all you have to do is put on my armor. And here is David putting on Saul's armor. He takes Saul's uh, sword and all that. He's like, ah, this doesn't fit me. I am thankful David realized, stop comparing myself with what Saul has. I don't have to put myself in the armor of Saul. Not so soon. Can I tell you? David knew one day he will be wearing the same armor, but it was not today. Because right now, he was not fit enough to wear on the armor that Saul had. And that's why I like in the story and through the scriptures here that David realized that he will go without the armor. And Saul said, you know what? Go fight. It's okay. Go die. <laughs> But I know that even at that given moment, David is like, you know what? I am enough. He went to face the giant and we know how the story ends there. Today, I'm here to help somebody understand. Brother, sister, you have what God has already wanted you to have. Enjoy your life. Live happy. Look to your own life. God has provided you with the resources that you can have a blessed married life, a blessed family life, a blessed ministry life. Stop comparing yourself. Hallelujah. We, stay, we, we compare and we kill ourselves. 
And today I want to bring this as an assurance and as a declaration. You can be what you did not have. You can be what you did not see. You can live in what you did not learn. You can portray what was not modeled to you because the greater one lives on the inside of you. You are enough. You are enough today. Brother, sister, stop comparing. You are enough. God and his promises are all on your side. Let's look to the Lord in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for the word that we heard today. Father, we, we see that how comparison kills our contentment, our joy, and comparison leaves us prideful, and comparison would destroy everything in our life, and comparison would uh, leave us jealous and, and, and kill our own brothers and sisters. And Father God, we never live in a state of joy and happiness, Lord. But today, we don't want to resent on God's goodness on others, but Father, we want to look into ourselves and see the goodness and the blessings of your in our life father we are checking ourselves today help us O oh lord that we stop comparing and kill the destiny you have ordained for us we look to you for grace we look to you for mercy father in our life's journey if through comparison we have destroyed anybody and their career and their happiness father we pray that you will forgive us father we pray that you will forgive us help us O oh lord that we live in a place and space where, Father, we don't compete with each other, but we collaborate with the body of Christ. Thank you for what you're about to do. And in Jesus' matchless name we pray. You can shout amen with me. Put on the chat right now. Amen. Let it be a bold cap. Amen. That we all put it together. Shout it out to our King. Amen and amen and amen. Now may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he smile over you and your family in your going, in your coming, in your job, in every place. May you find joy in the presence of our almighty God. Go be a world changer for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.